Today on Studio 18 Live, presented by Old Venice Pizza Company, Senior Associate Athletics Director Michael Thompson sits down with producer-director Chris Sabo, the director of Ole Miss Football, The Season. Now, here is Michael Thompson and Chris Sabo. Good afternoon and welcome to Studio 18, presented by Old Venice Pizza Company. This week, we are in the Williams Reed football foyer with a very special guest, our producer-director Chris Sabo. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Tonight's a big day. I mean, tonight's a big night. It is, it is. Six o'clock, the, the Bama episode comes out and uh, featuring the D-line and we're pretty excited about the episode. It's an incredible um, a story, the season is. And you've been working on the, the show, the season for how long? How long have you been? This is my third season. Third season of uh, the season. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of repetitive, I know. But, you know, it's, you can't really get around it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, the name says so much about, about the show and it's a special um, I guess product of one of the things that we use to personalize and humanize our student athletes and coaches and um, give us a I don't think people I guess I don't think people know that all the viewers the show has just gotten um, incredible uh, push this past year in, in viewership but I don't think that people realize like what goes into the show I mean is there a way even in a short amount of time that you could overview maybe a, a, a typical week and what what that looks like or maybe when production for the show started? Sure, yeah, the uh, we try to start the profiles as far as we can so that we can get ahead of them. You know, we try to uh, identify uh, with with uh, working with the football staff and, and their uh, recruiting uh, coordinator, the stories that they'd like to feature, um, the, the groups that, you know, have uh, good um, uh, Dynamics, story yeah, yeah storylines. Yeah. So we try to identify the good storylines and uh, get the profiles going early. So I, I was shooting profiles since uh, since before spring ball. So wow. you know it's been uh, seven or eight months, something like that. All, and then, all kind of gathering footage, right. That you're going to be eventually using in episodes that may not be in for another eight weeks or so, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, it, what people really don't know is you know how much we actually have to get you know to to have some, a, a good story to be able to tell a good story. You need to be able to come from multiple. Uh, angles. You need to have multiple voices. Uh, uh, basically, one voice passes a story along to another voice, and that's what kind of keeps it entertaining and not so, uh, it doesn't get stale so quick. Yeah, it's not like a, a formula. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Plug and play type stuff. Right. So, um, but what's a, what is like a, a typical week like? So, I mean, the show comes out tonight, um, and so you'll, you'll be working tirelessly even as soon as we're done here. You're going back to uh, back to your office to to finish up that show, but but start like let's start tomorrow, okay? Let's start so on a Thursday. Okay. To talk to talk to us about like what happens from Thursday up until maybe next Wednesday. Uh, well, we try to uh, plan as many segments as we can. Uh, on actually on, on Monday and Tuesday, uh, Thursday and Friday are actually you know almost too late, you know, because the the, the team practices with full pads on Tuesday. That's their hardest day of the week. Uh, by the time Thursday comes, they're in uh, spider shells, uh, barely in anything, no, not really any contact, really no intensity to it. Um, so the, the days that we really try to get going are early in the week, but we can't. We can do meetings on Thursdays. We can do uh, walks, walk and talk to class. We can do a, a ride along. Maybe someone's doing community service, going to read to the kids, um, you know, things like that that you know show the an involvement in the community that we have. Um, obviously, Saturday's game day. Uh, we, we label Sunday morning uh, all our footage, and uh, when I say label, it's every time that I press start and stop, uh, that clip needs to, you need to go into that clip and label exactly what it is. And um, we have a very specific naming convention that we use uh, to help us get, uh, use keywords to make things searchable, to make the enti entire department kind of run uh, s smoother than it would without keywords. And uh, at, on Sunday, uh, also, our skeleton edit guy comes in and he kind of you know, lays down the, um, the big plays from the game and the script is written. Um, you know, and that's, that's a late night. And then Mondays and Tuesdays are you know, absolute grinds, you know, to, just to get the you know, 10 minute show, a 10 minute game edit from uh, Monday to Wednesday uh, is pretty crazy. But, you know, the show has to be out of our hands, the show has to be out of my hands by Wednesday at one in order for it to be uh, converted and uh, distributed to all the, our affiliates and uh, you know, put up on the web so that we can get out on time for all our uh, anxious viewers. Yes, yeah, it's amazing. So how many, like on a, on a particular game, um, how many people have a camera that are kind of shooting for the season? Well, we function off, uh, the number's five. We function with a, uh, a top camera, which is like a high, a higher camera on, on, on the press deck. Like above the press box. Ab above of, the okay. press box. Um, or uh, mid-level in the press box, right in that area. Yeah. Um, uh, two cameras on the sidelines that are shooting main action, 
one camera that's shooting slow motion, uh, kind of like trench warfare type stuff, and then a camera on the bench grabbing all those little moments that, you know, if you're a fan, it doesn't matter how big of a fan you are, you never know what Laquan Treadwell is saying to his offensive line, you know, in, in crunch time. So we try to give uh, fans an experience and a, and a perspective and a, and a view into things that they wouldn't usually be able to see, and uh, while at the same time simultaneously telling the story of our players and, and helping us, uh, you know, make the program uh, look as good as possible. Yeah, it's really, I mean, we, you talked a lot about the, uh, I guess the nuts and bolts of production and putting cameras in certain places and how many you have and all that. And, that, and that's, that's important. But the, the thing that's been so unique about the show, and especially with your leadership and Micah's leadership, is it's not just the number of cameras, it's the style of the shot. And it's the cinematography, it's the, it's the, it's the feel of, uh, that's just totally different than what you'll get um, with the television broadcast. Talk a little bit about maybe your philosophy on, on that. And I think it comes from your background in NFL films, which is a unique, a very unique background and one that, that um, has obviously been very, very valuable to you. But talk a little bit about how you have brought some of that here. Absolutely. We try to uh, emulate NFL films in, in everything that we do. You know, NFL films is the, is the summit, it is the pinnacle of, of everything that is sports productions, in, in our opinion. Um, Steve Sable, Ed Sable and, and Steve, his son, uh, you know, have, have, they created an art form they did. That, that, uh, that puts a roof over my head, you yeah. know. So, uh, when I was at films, I, I went out of my way to, to get a relationship with, with Steve and I uh, walked past his office every day until I, until I met him just to tell him that I was thankful for the job and uh, didn't know he was a D3 football player like I was and we kind of hit it off and it was, uh, it was a very beneficial uh, relationship not only for um, myself, actually it probably wasn't very beneficial for them, but for me it was, it was life changing. You know, yeah. it was, uh, you know, it, 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 you learn how they do it. You know, and uh, at my next uh, university, I was trained by an NFL film cinematographer who knew, uh, who still shoots on Sundays. So I was basically taught the, the nuts and bolts of where to be and how to be there. You know, it's, uh, shooting sports is, is unique in the fact that it's uh, simultaneously created and consumed. So if you are not in the right place at the right time, you won't have what you need. If it, things only happen once, it's not like you can say, "Hey, run that play back. Let me see. If, let me get down here." So, um, you know, the philosophy we use is just to: uh, we work hard, we hustle, we run. Um, I don't know. I don't know if people notice or, or not, but uh, we have. Uh, you know, our, our, our saying is: if if one person leaves the stadium, go, man, that camera guy hustled today. Then that's that's good enough for us. And uh, if we got the shot, it's even better. So. I'm curious. Is that is that where you got the nickname Golden Rhino? <laughs> is that from is that from your running of the sidelines? Uh, or well, baby Rhino? <laughs> or was it from your D3 football days? No, well, that started here at Ole Miss. Okay. It might have come from the uh, old man basketball. Uh, you know, the the staff kind of gets together during the basketball season, get some get some cardio in, but uh, I go hard in the paint. But uh, <laughs> Golden Rhino. Yeah. But the sidelines are the SEC sidelines are no joke. You know, yeah. there's there's uh, especially at uh, a bigger, a bigger uh, school, someone that has more coverage, you know, the, the, depending on where you're at, it, it depends on how many cameras you have, how many people are fighting for the same position. You know, there's only 10 yards in the end zone. So, and there's, you know, hundreds of, of papers writing on the same team. So you're basically fighting over your spot. And that's another reason why we, we run. We hustle to try to get that spot so that when the play does happen, uh, you never know when it's going to happen. But when it does, we're going to be in the right spot and we're going to be ready. That's awesome. So what, I mean, after what, three seasons or so, or two and a half full, um, is there a moment that you remember of the show? Is it, do, you have a favorite, do you have a favorite episode, or do you have a favorite segment of a particular show? Like, or just a personal favorite that maybe nobody knows about? Uh, Alabama last year was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that was our, uh, one of our Emmy submissions that, you right. know, that uh, took the cake, but it's really weird. My favorite episode from my first year was Mississippi State, that, that awful game when we went to Starkville and we, yeah. and we fumbled in the end zone in overtime. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was very well put together. It was, it was planned out. I felt like we were finally getting on a roll. And it was, you know, when you're in, in week four, or week seven, you're in the middle of the grind. It's hard for you to see the, the it's hard, hard to see the forest from the trees. Right. Um, but by the end of the season, we had got to such a point where we had got into a process and we were rolling. And then it was like, the, the game kind of left you flat, but at the same time, I was ready for another episode, and we, we were done. 
Yeah. So we had, now now it was time to you know take a step back, sharpen the blade, and uh, identify the stories for next year, and basically start it all over again. It's very cool. Um, so. Who would you say? Who would you say was the person that has influenced you the most in your in your whole career? It's probably one of the, the Sables, but I, I well, I, I I wish I could have been there for longer. Yeah. But you know, in, in reality, I was there for for a summer in between my junior and senior year, so I didn't I didn't have that much time to to, right. to soak up as much as I ca I could. But uh, Evan Shaw, my boss, went at, at Ohio. You know, he was the one, he was the ground cinematographer that basically taught me, you know, how to how to follow a ball. You know what what a C grip is. You know how to you know how, how many fingers you have to use to two fingers for zooming and three fingers for focusing and um, just to to go up and and follow a ball and get that NFL films look where it's just floating on midair. You know just glo glory from above. Yeah. Just Nike's Slow floating motion, at you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so so yeah, he definitely he taught me the ways. Yeah, a lot of people would think that, that in sports it's all using autofocus on the camera, but it's not at all. Oh no, no, this is we everything we, you do. We at Ole Miss Sports Productions, focus. we are professionals. Yeah. Uh, auto functions. We, I mean, if there was a way to disable them, I would. Yeah. Uh, but for some reason, I don't know. Our, our one of our uh, multimedia specialists, Brownie, you know, he he uh, he hasn't figured out how to take it off yet. But we're 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 well on our way. But yeah, these. Uh, Especially at, at night games, the, the, your depth of field is so shallow that um, you know, someone's face mask could be in focus, but their face would be out of focus. Right. right? So you know, you're focusing every six inches. So it, it, you, you, knowing what it takes to have a shot be in focus the entire time you know, really let, lets you know like, you have to be masterful uh, at, at your job. And I'm not, not saying that I'm masterful by any means, but you know, we, we do our best to get, to get better every week. And you know, we, we sit down and you know, we kind of sharpen the blade and, um, look at things we can do better and um, you know just try to just try to get better every week. I love um, this will be the last thing we talk about but I, I love watching you guys during the game and um, I get to do more of that on the road and last weekend um, in Tuscaloosa um, I was standing right beside you when uh, Quincy caught that that tipped ball um, on third down and, and took it to the house. Yeah. And, and it's funny to watch you and a lot of the shooters, when a big play like that happens, you you immediately, after the play is over, you're going back and you're looking at the, 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 the screen and, and trying to make yeah. sure that you were in focus, that no one ran in front of you, that you have basically a clean shot, or if the ball's in the air, that you got the, you know, the full, right. you know, that, that glory floating ball up there. Right. Um, but uh, is that something that, like, after every play, like, that's, that's, all, that's the only thing on your mind is, did I get it? Well, it's actually, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, in the biz, you know. Yeah. It's called uh, uh, chimping. Chimping, that's right. Yeah, because, yep. you know, you look down at your phone and you're like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> like, everyone, you know, come look at this. Like, ooh, ooh, look at this shot, you know. I like, never knew that's why the name, where yeah, the name came from. that's why all it's right, called right, chimping, because, right, you know, like it kind of sounds like a, uh, a yeah. um, chimpanzee. But uh, it's, it's actually a bad habit uh, to get into because... Um, you may miss something you, else. Yeah, too. you may miss something else. So, you know, I kind of like to I like to keep my camera on my shoulder and on my eye as much as possible, and and basically imagine that I can't I, I can't see through my through my eyes. I can only see through my camera because once you see a shot, by the time you get your camera up, by the time you get in into it and zoomed in and focused, the shot's usually over. So if your camera's not on your shoulder, and your camera's not on your eye, and you're not ready to shoot, most likely if you see something, you're going to miss it. So. Uh, chimping is kind of a uh, is a bad habit, but that was a special circumstance right. because that's that's an historic play, and I just wanted to make sure I was in focus. And you were right there, so I figured I was there right there. It was awesome to watch it again and again and again. So I really appreciate you coming on the show uh, tonight. Um, the show will be online and will be um, at the watch party at Rafters, and um, you guys are just doing amazing work. And we're, we're really proud of you. I think as a as a university, it's it's. It's a great, great asset for our brand and appreciate the work that all the whole department. Yeah, so that's one thing hands. I wanted to say before we, we yeah. get out of here. This is not this is not a one person job. This is a department wide uh, push, you know, for, for for one mission. And, you know, we kind of everyone has their, their different sports, you know, because we cover the season for for every sport that we have here uh, right. at, at Ole Miss. And we kind of, you know, do cover your own responsibilities. And then every Saturday we kind of come together and, you know, pull it off by Wednesday. So it's, it's a it's a tremendous, uh, it takes tremendous uh, coordination between teams. It takes clear communication. And, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a great team. We got a, uh, great guys that, um, you know, get along with each other, that have a respect for what we're trying to do. And, 
you know, we just hope for, for the best and- Worked uh, their tails off too. Yeah. Did that, you go to sleep last night? No. 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 No sleep last night. No. I know, I'm, still, I'm still pretty though, right? Yeah, you look great. <laughs> makeup, makeup is a wonderful thing. It is. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, thanks for being on the show. All right, Thank so stick man. around for a, a sneak peek uh, of the episode that will air tonight. And be sure to check out the three things video where Ross talks about three most important things that you need to know about game day. Um, check that out on any of our video platforms. Thanks to Old Venice Pizza Company for sponsoring the show. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks on Studio 18. This week on campus, Coach Mott and the Rebel soccer team return to the Ole Miss Soccer Stadium Friday night when they host Alabama. Match is slated for 7 p.m. Saturday, Hugh Freeze and the number three ranked Rebels head back to the vault to host Vanderbilt. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. and a limited number of return visiting team tickets are available. To purchase, visit OleMissTicks.com or call 888-REB-TKTS. Sunday, Ole Miss Athletics hosts a split doubleheader when Coach McRoberts and the Rebel volleyball team host in-state rival Mississippi State at 2 p.m. Then the nightcap pairs up the Rebel soccer team with LSU. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. As always, admission to soccer and volleyball is free. Don't forget to join Hugh Freeze and David Kellum every Monday night at Buffalo Wild Wings for Reb Talk, beginning at 7 p.m. New this fall, watch the best college football show in the country every Wednesday at Rafters on the Square. This year, the Emmy Award-winning show The Season will premiere its weekly show on the rooftop of Rafters located on the Oxford Square. Admission is free. Do you have a little Rebel? Then sign them up for the Rebel Kids Club. The Rebel Kids Club is the official youth organization of Ole Miss Athletics. Membership benefits include free tickets to select Ole Miss sporting events, special members only invitations, and the official Rebel Kids Club t-shirt. For more information or to sign up, visit rebelkidsclub.com. Make sure you download the app for real Rebels and start earning points and prizes just for going to Ole Miss sporting events. You could be the lucky winner to travel with the football team next year when the Rebels take on Vanderbilt. Download the Rebel Rewards app today by searching Rebel Rewards in the App Store and downloading. And finally, Ole Miss men's and women's hoops tickets are now on sale for the 2015-16 season. Don't miss out on the first year inside the new pavilion at Ole Miss. To purchase your season tickets, visit OleMissTix.com or call 888-REB-TKTS. Ain't nothing like that good old grill food. Man, the chocos even smell good, you know what I mean? About time, man. I told y'all I would've didn't know what he was doing, man. That for a bit started, bro. Okay. So you fold under pressure, those you telling me? Man, no, nah, I ain't folding. You can let all the people you want, you can let them make jokes and all that good stuff, you know what I mean? Let them make jokes, it's okay, it's yeah, okay. Right. It make you wanna... They're gonna be the first one to get the piece. I don't know, I guess I can compare it to like, let's take mothers for instance. You know how like when a baby whine, they like, oh, he hungry or she hungry. He or she needs to, a diaper change or something like that. It's just something that you know when you a cook. And when you a cook, you can look at it, you can smell it and all that good stuff, you know what I mean? And you already know if it's ready to eat or not. Oh, ain't no mistakes. You look good now, though. You know you know what you're doing. I know I know what I'm doing, baby. If it ain't a burnt piece of soap, it's all good. You know, it ain't good cooking. Man, you tell me what it look like. You tell me. You know what I mean? Because it look, <laughs> nah, it look good, you know what I mean? It's good. By the time to go in the house, everybody in there eating. I already know it's good, so it's gonna be gone. We about to go up in the crib, man. We about to go in the house. They gotta fill my belly for it to get all eight. <laughs>